happy December. Hey everyone, I know you're probably wondering what kind of video is she gonna show me in December when there's nothing to tour around and see? Well, that's what this video is all about because I know for some of you at this time when it is so cold, there's really not that much happening in the garden. But however, there is a lot that could be happening in the garden and a lot of different things that I'm going to just show you that I do around this time and things that I may not be doing and I just want to show you how I kind of close and rest in my beds but I just really want to give you a good look at what my garden looks like around this time in December. So first of all I'm limited on time of when I get to do things because it gets very dark during this time. So the sun sets at I think it's around five o'clock, five something, 5.30. And so by the time I get home from work, I don't really even have much time to do anything around here in the garden. And so I take advantage as much as I can by the time I get home with maybe the 45 minutes, 30 minutes, and sometimes maybe if I'm lucky an hour to be able to get some work done in the garden or maybe some harvesting or just tending to just certain things that I like to do during this time, during December's and during the cold weather months. And I still like to come out here and hang out with my buddy, Coconut. You say hi to them, Coconut. <laughs> Aw, there you go. Good. Say hi to Coconut. We like to hang out a lot outside. And so <laughs> this is one of the good things of still coming outside and spending time with my garden buddy, Coconut. <laughs> the two garden closures that I have here, I put them to sleep for the winter months. Let's take a look at what it was that I did. So you can see that I used leaves. They were all dried leaves and I covered all of my beds. And I'm doing this so that I protect the soil. So they just kind of dig through, just want to see is the soil protected? And look, it's not even frozen under here. It's moist. There's the soil. It's pretty much about three to four inches just protecting that soil so that will be good and then in the spring i'll be able to just come back here push it back and then sow my seeds directly into here now this garden bed over here in particular is a different situation because i did not fill it up because i decided you know what before i close all my beds let me go ahead and test my soil because that is something that I knew that I really need to do. I know that my soil was very high alkaline type soil, but I use a lot of compost. And so I'm going to make a whole new video on that as well. Just letting you know, just my whole process with the soil testing and what I found out. And so what I'm going to do with this soil is actually fill it with um, the rest of it with some top soil and then cover it up and then close it up. So I still need to get that done. I've been really busy just with other things and life. And so I haven't gotten that done yet, but I really wanna make a video to let you know what I learned about soil testing and the composting and what type of nutrients are lacking or needing and what's going on with my garden beds. Because I think that's really, really important as we continue to grow and become knowledgeable as gardeners, we need to understand that our soil is one of the most important thing if we really want to have healthy and striving plants. And so that will be on another video. The other cool thing that you'll find are just some garden herbs. So I still have cilantro in here. And I've done this before where I just allow the cilantro to grow because it's a cool crop anyways. There's still a lot of greenery on the cilantro, but I love to come out here, throw it on some salads, throw it in some foods. It's so great and it smells so good. So I've got cilantro here. Eventually it will just all kind of brown out and die out. But then the cool thing is that when it starts warming up, one year when I did this, I started seeing the green and growing back again. So really cool. And it's also helping with that soil structure and covering and protecting the soil as well. On this end over here, I've got some, there, picked a lot of it out. I've got some lemon thyme. And so there's lemon thyme in here, and this is really good for cooking and some soups. And the really good thing about growing a garden is that you get to use your own produce, your own things, your own herbs. And I find it to be really exciting because I really haven't been spending money on buying these things, which for a little container in the grocery store, you'd spend so much money. But instead, when you're growing it yourselves, and then some of these are perennials or some of them will just last a really long time. 
it's just so awesome when you have that time that right that makes sense yeah this is lemon thyme and then i also have just another thyme as well as you go through you'll see just different herbs that i have just still sitting in the garden i never did pull them up and i believe this is some hyssop i do need to pull this one up I'm, i wanted to harvest more of it and i haven't done that but look still green thriving well awesome some more time look at that and so i just come out here sometimes even late at night just to come and get some herbs for cooking especially when i'm cooking dinner because like i said it gets dark so early this is also a good time to do any kind of patching up of things sometimes like look here with these things look at this like this has come off this is to help secure this chicken coop fencing and so things like that um i do during this time i do some maintenance sometimes just to prevent squirrels from getting through you know this material none of this material ever lasts forever and sometimes it starts to thin out wear out and so i have to repatch it up so i spend time patching up things as well and then here's another garden bed that has to be filled and then even down through this area right here is where i want to add in some more garden beds and so it's just really finding the time when I know that I can do this and when the weather will allow me to do it where it's not too cold. I have the time, but I'd like to add some more garden beds here. Now, I'm not going to be digging through the ground because the ground is just, it's, it's freezing most of these days, but it's tough. But if I am able to build some raised beds on top of this, I will get that started in this area all the way down and then i want to put in some more of these these are the cattle panel arch trellises i would like to put some in this same area all along here and then all along this way so just another project that i'm thinking about about doing and let's see what coconut's getting into right now what'd you find you found some chamomile <laughs> these are just the leaves of chamomile i believe this is the german chamomile and so I might go ahead and pull this up. But it's, you know, I just grew it pretty late in the season. Just wanted that to grow and just see how that would do. And then I've got my papa trees. This whole area is just not really finished. I really need to do a lot of cleanup and close it up. But the, you can't even see it. But I planted four papa trees here in these different spaces. I need to clean up this mess. See, I got to clean that up. Another pawpaw tree right over here. This is just helping support it. And then another one over here and over here. So in this whole area, I would like to plant some more trees. And so I want to start preparing this area and covering some of the grass area where I know that as soon as it starts seeing sun, when it starts warming up, that it will start sprouting and i just want to see if i can start killing any kind of weeds and grass in the area where i'm planning on planting more trees if you saw some of my short videos on persimmons then you would know that i have a persimmon tree i'm trying to find one of these soft ones you know that i can pick persimmons so that's what i've been doing as well is picking these persimmons harvesting them eating them so that's kind of stuff that you can get done too the other fun thing that i love to do is composting and i was able to make recently compost two new compost for this year and you can just check out my videos so you can see how i made them but these well actually this compost in particular is the one that had pumpkins in it it was rotting pumpkins that had been just sitting in people's yards from like halloween and in the holidays and the fall festivals so i've got pumpkins in here some food kitchen scraps some dry leaves water and even some lemongrass and just a few other things and then i have another compost there as well and what i also plan on doing is creating like a mulch leaf but put in a bag and showing you all how to do that so that you can use that later on in a year or next year so it's just gonna sit in one place but 
that's not ready i still have to create some bags for that but this whole area right here is what i use for like composting this is where i smashed the pumpkins and did things like that right over here i have a lot of just little logs and trees and twigs and things like that that i can use as organic matter for just different things in the garden but that's all that's going on back here in the garden the other thing that I got to show you is my indoor garden, which I haven't really gotten started yet, but I just have a few things that are in there propagating. And I need to spend some more time on that. I love growing indoors. It is one of my favorites, but I also love spending time outside. And so these are just different things that have to get done, but that's also something that you can do when you don't have the capabilities to do that much outside. The other thing is that if you do want to grow some uh, cold hardy crops like brassicas or anything like that, or even some onions, you can start that and do that in your cooler months. Really, you need to start it when it's you're able to get the seeds to germinate because you need a certain temperatures to get your seeds to germinate. But once it does and the plants have established, they can withstand the temperatures outdoors, especially in a cold climate. And another thing you can do is if you want to elongate the growing season, you can cover it up as well and create some kind of like greenhouse structure over it, over your bed. So these are just some creative things that you can do. You also want to sanitize your tools and clean that up. And I still need to do that. My growing area where I do a lot of the work, I still need to do some cleanup around the area. So that needs to be done. So there's a lot that can be done during this time. And growing indoors, I love to grow indoors. And that's one of my favorite things to do as well, because I don't have to deal with the pests, the weather changes and all that. It is just a controlled climate where I grow foods indoors, like my greens, my kales, lettuce, and even some root vegetables. So I am looking forward to creating some videos on that. I just need to get it started. I hope this video was helpful and that you've enjoyed this garden somewhat tour with no gardening stuff really outside, but I hope you enjoyed it and liked it. And just remember to grow leafy and I'll see you all next time. Bye.